If you're looking for amazing breakfast inspiration, you've come to the right place. Hi everyone, this is Kiki. I've put together eight amazing breakfast recipes, perfect for the whole family. I really hope you enjoy watching this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you get notified when I post something new. Let's get started. Everyone loves pancakes. They are fluffy and sweet, super fun to make, and you can make them in any shape, color, or flavor. One of the important steps in getting the perfect pancakes every time is to use the exact measurement. And for reference, this is how I measure my ingredients. You can use measuring cups and spoons, or you can use a kitchen scale. I'm going to provide the recipe in both cups and grams and the recipe is going to be in the description box below. To make the pancakes, start by adding all the wet ingredients to a bowl. So here I have buttermilk or you can use unsweetened yogurt, oil, egg and water. Give this a very good mix. Next, add the dry ingredients. So the sugar, baking powder, baking soda, and plain flour. Mix this just until combined, then stop mixing. It's okay if your batter is a bit lumpy. Mixing for too long will make too much gluten to form and that can result in a tough pancake. Heat up a pan or skillet then add about a quarter cup of the batter to the hot pan. You can spray a pan with butter or non-stick spray before doing this. Allow this cook for about 2-3 to three minutes or until you start to see bubbles at the top, then flip. Using an ungreased or unoiled pan is going to give your pancakes a uniform color like this. Allow the other side cook for about one minute and it's done. Usually when I'm making pancakes for my family, I always use a griddle. With this, I can make all the pancakes at once without wasting much time. They are relatively inexpensive and they last a long time. I've had this one for about 9 years now. And they're not just for pancakes, you can use this for eggs, bacon, burgers and so on. I'll add the link to this exact griddle hopefully if I can find it. And if I can't find this one, I'll look for the best alternative. You can also keep it exciting for kids by making other shapes of pancakes. To do this, transfer the pancake batter to a ketchup or a squeeze bottle. And it's not compulsory to use the squeeze bottle to do this, it just makes the pancakes neater. If you have younger kids who are still into Mickey, you can make Mickey Mouse pancakes for them. To make Mickey pancakes, just do one large circle and two smaller circles to make the ears. I thought I did pretty good, but my sister said it looked more like a teddy bear than Mickey. What do you think? These are smaller pancakes, so they only took about 30 seconds on each side. You can also make some shape pancakes, they're super easy to do and these are super fun and educational for younger kids. You can do the common shapes, I was able to do a circle, a square, a triangle and this was my best attempt to do a star. You can also just do shapes using already made pancake molds, they do have those on Amazon. If you have additional fun pancakes to make for kids, I would love to see your ideas or hear from you. Thank you. 
you can also do names and those are also always super fun let me know which of these pancake styles you'll be trying for your kiddos i'm going to serve this the classic way by adding some fried bacon and eggs i hope you enjoyed making pancakes with me i certainly had fun making them please stay tuned for other videos in this compilation don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one French toast is one of my favorite breakfasts to make simply because it's so quick and easy so let me show you how I make it. To make French toast you're gonna start by slicing the bread into big slices like this. I like to use sweet bread for my French toast. I made this bread a few days ago and if you need the recipe I'm going to add that in the description box. Next break some eggs in a bowl. You're going to need a bowl that is wide enough for the bread to fit in since we're going to be dipping the bread into this mixture. Add the milk and then add cinnamon powder. If you don't have cinnamon powder or you don't like it, you can substitute with a little bit of grated nutmeg. Now mix this until it all comes together. It's going to take a while to fully mix because of the cinnamon. Next, add the sliced bread. You want this to soak for about one minute on each side. You can do it for longer depending on the thickness of your bread. If the bread you're using isn't sweet at all, you can add a little bit of sugar or sweetener of your choice to the mixture before soaking the bread in. Next, heat up a skillet and melt the butter. You can also use oil for this, but the butter really gives it a nice flavor. When the butter is melted, add the bread. Now you're going to cook this on very low heat for about 5 minutes on each side. The secret for a great french toast is cooking on low heat. This gives the bread a very nice and crispy outside and it's not mushy on the inside. But if you like a softer french toast, you can cook this on medium heat for a shorter time so the bread doesn't dry out. After about 5 minutes, flip the bread and then cook the other side for an additional 4 to 5 minutes. You can also add more butter at this time if you need to. When the other side is fully cooked and brown, take it out and your French toast is ready. Like I mentioned, it's super easy to make, it's literally fail proof and the recipe is going to be in the description box if you need it. For little ones, I usually just cut this into French toast sticks like this. And you can serve the French toast with literally anything you like. I like to add some berries, luckily I have some strawberries in the fridge so I'm gonna cut this up into smaller pieces. And these can be enjoyed by the entire family. For the kids, serve with some syrup, you can add some fried or boiled eggs, bacon, sausages or what your kids prefer. You can also serve the french toast whole with some fresh berries and a drizzle of maple or pancake syrup. Let me know what you think about this recipe and if you'd like to try it. Thanks for watching, cheers! This is one breakfast dish that my kids absolutely love and you only need 5 ingredients to make this. The first ingredient you will need is yam. Start by cutting the yam. A very effective way I save my leftover yam is by dabbing it in cinnamon powder. Cinnamon powder has antibacteria and antifungi properties so this is gonna stop the yam from spoiling quickly and you can just save the leftover cinnamon powder to use later. Using cinnamon can make the yam stay fresh for up to 3 weeks or longer. Next, I'll cut the yam into slices like this and then I'll peel the skin off.
Next, I'll cut the yam into about one inch cubes like this and I'll just repeat this with all the slices. Next, I'll rinse the yam in water multiple times until it's clean. After doing that, I'll transfer the yam cubes to a clean pot and I'm going to season with salt and I'll put just enough water to cover the yam. Cover the pot and allow to cook for about 8 minutes on medium heat until the yam is soft. While the yam is cooking, I'm going to break some eggs in a bowl. I'll season this with salt. You can also add black pepper or any preferred seasoning. I'll give this a proper mix and then set aside. I'll check on the yam, it should be fully cooked now. I'll take this off heat and drain the water off. Next, I'm going to add oil to a white skillet and allow this heat up. When the oil is hot, I'm going to add the cooked yam cubes and I'm going to fry this for about 5-8 to eight minutes or until it's brown and crispy. When the yam is brown like this, I'll add a little butter. If your pan still has a good amount of oil in it, you can skip the butter. Or you can just add more oil if you don't want to use butter. I'm going to wait for a few minutes for the butter to melt before adding the egg. When the butter has melted, add the egg mixture. I'm going to let the egg set for about 1 minute before mixing. You can also add some of your favorite vegetables at this point if you like. Some great vegetables to add to this dish would be spinach, peppers, tomatoes, onions, mushrooms or whatever you like. Mix this until the egg is fully cooked and your breakfast yam and egg is going to be ready. You can also make this for lunch or dinner. If you don't have yam or you want to substitute with something else, plantains, sweet potatoes and Irish potatoes are great options. Serve this warm and enjoy. Waffles are not only a delicious breakfast option, but it's also a great treat that can be enjoyed at any time of the day. It's also super simple to make, so let me show you how I make it. You're going to start by combining all the wet ingredients. So here I have some eggs, I've added melted butter, you can also use oil. I've added some buttermilk and regular milk and the sugar. I'm gonna give this a good mix until it's combined. If you don't have buttermilk, you can use unsweetened yogurt or you can make your own buttermilk by combining regular milk and lemon juice or white vinegar. I'm going to leave the full recipe in the description box. Next, add the dry ingredients, which is the all-purpose flour, baking powder, baking soda and salt. I'm also going to grate some nutmeg. You can also use vanilla or any flavoring you like. I'll give this a good mix until all the ingredients come together. You want to avoid mixing this for too long so the waffles don't come out tough. So I'll mix this just until combined and stop. If there are lumps in the batter, that is perfectly fine. After mixing, I'm going to get my waffle iron ready. Turn the waffle iron on and when it's hot, spray with non-stick spray. You can also use butter or oil for this. Next, add the butter in the waffle iron. I'm using about a quarter cup of butter for each space. Depending on the size of your waffle iron, you might need more or less. Cover this and allow to cook for about 2 minutes. You might need more time depending on the type of waffle iron you have. 
I'm going to provide a link for all the appliances I'm using in this video so that is going to be in the description box if you need it. Take the waffles out and just repeat this process until all the batter is finished. If you're using a Belgian waffle maker to make this, it's going to take a longer time to cook. So you're going to add about half a cup of butter and allow this cook for about 3 to 4 minutes. And I also love this individual waffle maker by Dash. You can use this if you're making a small quantity of waffles and I'm also going to link this in the description box if you need it. When it's done, transfer the waffles to a cooling rack until ready to serve. The cooling rack is going to help maintain the crispy exterior of the waffles compared to piling it on a plate which can sometimes make it soft or soggy. I usually like to serve the waffles with some powdered sugar or pancake syrup. I also like to serve this with some freshly chopped strawberries or blueberries or sometimes a combination of both depending on what I have available. Kids sometimes get bored of eating the same thing over and over again so you can shake things up by adding new flavors into your waffles. I really love the strawberry waffles and I make this by chopping some dried strawberries. You can get this at the store. Add the dried strawberries into your batter. You can also use freshly chopped strawberries for this and you can make this for special occasions. I made this for the the last Valentine's Day and it was really a hit. Serve your waffles with some fried eggs and bacon or sausages or whatever protein you like to have for breakfast. You can also make your waffles healthier by adding whole grains for example oats or you can sweeten with fruits like banana instead of adding sugar or you can add your favorite fruits like strawberries, blueberries or apples to make it extra nutritious for everyone. So get your whole family in the kitchen and have some fun making waffles. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. Oatmeal is one of those meals you either love or hate, no in between. I absolutely love oatmeal, it's my go-to everyday breakfast. Luckily, most of my family members like it too, so let me show you how I make it. So I always start by boiling the water. You can use milk if you like, I prefer to use water. Cover this and bring this to a boil. After about 5 minutes, I'll add in a little bit of salt, just like a pinch of salt, and then I'll add the oats. I'm using quick oats for this recipe. It takes only about 1 minute to fully cook, so I'm going to stir this and allow it to cook for about 1-2 to two minutes. After a few minutes it's done, I'll take this off the heat and serve immediately. Oatmeal is great for big and little kids. It is gluten free and it's full of fiber and full of minerals. Serve this with your child's favorite fruit and you can sweeten this with sugar or honey. Please note that babies younger than a year should not be given honey. Add some liquid milk and breakfast is ready. One thing I love about oatmeal is how versatile it can be. You can try it with different fruits to create different flavors. This is apple cinnamon oatmeal. And to make this, just repeat the step in the previous video. Add some cinnamon and some chopped apples. I also like to add about a teaspoon of chai seeds. Allow this cook for about 1-2 to two minutes and your apple cinnamon oatmeal is ready. Sweeten with milk and I like to add some coconut flakes and some more chia seeds. Chia seed is another great source of fiber and it's really really good for your digestion. And I recently read that when measured gram for gram, chia seed contain more calcium than milk, more iron than spinach, more omega-3 than salmon and so on. You can read more about the benefits of chia seeds for kids and adults. If you like chocolate, you can try out this chocolate oatmeal. I made this recently and it's now one of my top 3 oatmeal flavors. 
To make this, bring milk or water to a boil, add the oatmeal and add a pinch of salt. Also add some milo powder or cocoa powder. Lastly, I'll add some peanut butter and give this a good mix. Cook for about one to two minutes and your chocolate oatmeal is ready. Someone once asked me why I add salt to my oatmeal and the simple answer is that salt is a flavor enhancer so when you add a little bit of salt like a pinch of salt you don't need to add too much sugar or sweetener. And another tip if you like mushy oatmeal or soft oatmeal you don't need to boil your water you can just add all the ingredients at the beginning. I'll serve my chocolate oatmeal with some freshly chopped strawberries, some coconut flakes and milk. Let me know which of the oatmeal flavor is your favorite, the plain, the apple cinnamon or the chocolate. Bye for now. I love making crepes on a Saturday morning. I think they're the perfect weekend breakfast and they're so easy to make. To make this, simply add all your ingredients into a blender. So go ahead and add the eggs, milk, melted butter or oil, nutmeg, sugar and a pinch of salt. Add water and add the all-purpose flour. Blend this for about one minute. If you don't have a blender, you can simply mix all the ingredients in a bowl. The blender simply gives you a smoother batter free of lumps. Next, spray a pan with oil. You can also use butter for this. Allow the pan heat up, then pour about a quarter cup of the crepe mix. Move the pan in a circular motion so it coats the pan evenly. Cook on medium heat for about 2 minutes, then flip. Cook the other side for an additional 1-2 to two minutes, then take out. Repeat this process until the batter is finished. You can store any leftover batter in the fridge for up to 3 days or in the freezer for up to 3 months. And I noticed that crepes actually taste better when it's refrigerated. So if you have the time, you can make this, put it in the fridge for about 1 hour before cooking. And you don't have to serve it plain, you can add some fillings. A few examples would be banana and peanut butter, Nutella and strawberry, whipped cream, jam and so on. You can serve it flat or you can roll into different shapes. I usually prefer the rolled ones, especially for kids because it's easier to eat. You can also do a savory filling such as eggs, sausages, peppers and so on. Roll it up and enjoy as a breakfast wrap. I hope you enjoy making your crepes and happy cooking. Sandwiches are a great option for breakfast. They are super quick and easy to make, making them just perfect for busy mornings. Most importantly, kids absolutely love them. Here are a few of my favorite breakfast sandwiches. Peanut butter in jelly is a popular favorite. To make this, just spread your peanut butter all over the bread like this. And this is my favorite brand of peanut butter I like to use. For the jam or jelly, I really love this brand. I'm going to spread it on top of the peanut butter. Most people when making peanut butter and jelly sandwich will put the peanut butter on one side of the bread and put the jelly on the other side. I find that when you do that, usually the side with the jelly becomes soggy, especially when you're not eating the sandwich right away. So what I always do is put the jelly on top of the peanut butter, so the peanut butter acts as a barrier to stop the bread from soaking. To make it fun, I use this sandwich cutter to cut my sandwiches. I got this off Amazon and I'm going to put the link in the description box. It has a dual function to cut and seal, so you just press it on the sides to cut the bread and then you press the little knob up there to seal the sandwich. And you can get this in a variety of shapes. 
You can also try a chocolate spread sandwich. Usually I'm not a big fan of this because I find them too sweet, especially for breakfast. For the chocolate spread, I'm going to cut this using a heart-shaped cutter. This particular sandwich cutter comes with a sealer that is not attached. So after cutting, just use the sealer to press on tight to seal. And there are so many other fun shaped sandwich cutter you can get. I'm going to provide a link to some of my favorites and that is gonna be in the description box. And you can also use these sandwich cutters to make some of your favorites chicken, cheese or tuna sandwiches. After making your sandwiches, you don't have to throw away the crust. You can save those to make breadcrumbs. To make this, simply put the bread crust in a baking tray and bake at about 250 degrees Fahrenheit until it's completely dry. When it's dry, allow to cool, then crush in a food processor or blender. You can store the breadcrumbs in an airtight container or in a Ziploc bag. You can also use the sandwich crust to make additional breakfast. To do this, heat up some oil or butter in a pan. Next, add the sandwich crust, then break one egg each into the bread. The bread is going to act as a perfect egg mold for the eggs. I'm going to season this slightly with salt. I'm going to let this cook for about 2 to 3 minutes on low heat. Flip the bread and allow to cook for an additional 1 to 2 minutes before taking it out. The bread and egg is perfect for big kids, little kids or even adults. I'm going to serve this with some fried hot dogs or sausages. So I'll just clean the pan, add some more oil and add the hot dogs. The hot dogs were previously frozen so I cut them into thin circles so they cook through. Fry this for about 2-3 to three minutes or until they get a good sear on both sides. When it's a little brown on both sides, take them out and serve. Lastly, I'll add the avocado. Avocados are great for kids. They are a great source of vitamin C, fiber, magnesium, folate and so on. And you can give avocados to your babies as soon as they start eating solids. Breakfast is ready. Let me know what you think and let me know if you'll be trying this. Hi everyone, welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to share with you my simple process on how to make akara. Akara is one of Nigerians' favorite Saturday morning breakfast. Usually pair this with pap, you can eat it with bread or you can enjoy it by itself. I'm going to start by washing the beans, which is the main ingredient for this dish. I'm using brown beans in this recipe, but you can also use black eyed peas. First step is to peel the beans and I'm going to do this by soaking the beans first in lukewarm water for about 5 minutes until the skin is a bit loose. After about 5 minutes, I am going to get the skin off by rubbing it in between my palm like this until most of the skin has separated from the beans. When you're done, it should look like this. And if you don't want to go through the traditional route of washing the beans, you can also do this in your food processor. To do this, transfer the soaked beans to a food processor and pulse a few times until the skin comes off. After doing this, transfer the beans to a large bowl, add a lot of water and we're going to start separating the skin from the beans. 
After adding water, most of the shaft is going to float to the surface. Now you want to transfer this to a sieve and you're going to repeat this process until the beans is completely clean. After rinsing a couple of times, the beans should look like this. It's okay to have a couple of shafts left in the beans, that is completely normal. I'm going to discard the shaft at this point and next I'm going to soak the beans in about one or two cups of water and I usually do this whole process the night before and I just pop it in the fridge and let it soak overnight. The next morning, drain the water out of the beans and I'm going to proceed to blending this. For Akara, you want to use as little water as you possibly can, which means you're going to need a good blender. For this video, I'm using a Vitamix blender and before I got my Vitamix, I used to use a Ninja blender and i found out that the small smoothie cup was the most effective to blend beans without using too much water i'm going to link both blenders in the description box in case you're interested or if you're in nigeria you can simply check out kiki's favorite things on instagram to purchase the blenders Next, I'm going to transfer the blended bean puree to a large bowl. After doing this, I'm going to get started to prepare the other ingredients I would need for the akara. Here I have a little onion and pepper, hot pepper or ataro, and I'm going to use my ninja chopper to give this a rough blend. You can also chop it up with a knife if you wish. And most people add the onion and pepper to the beans while blending. You can also do that. This is just a personal preference. I like the pepper and onion roughly chopped. Next, I'm going to attach the whisk attachment to a hand mixer and I'm going to whisk the bean puree until it is light and fluffy. You can use a stand mixer to also achieve this. If you don't have either of them, you can go ahead and use a regular handheld whisk or you can use a wooden spoon. The aim here is to incorporate air into the mixture so it comes out light and fluffy, not dense. I mix this for a total of about seven minutes. The time will vary depending on the brand of hand mixer you have and also the speed. And you also want to be careful not to over whisk this so the butter doesn't become way too light. I'm just going to show you what it looks like before and after. You can see on the right the butter is light and airy and it doesn't fall off immediately. I'll season this with salt and the pepper mix from earlier. And I'm just going to take a little of the mixture out because somebody in my household does not like pepper. So I'm going to be frying that separately. This is also one of the reasons I blend the beans separately from the pepper so that I can separate it before frying. I'm just going to give this another good mix until the pepper is fully incorporated in the batter. 
Before I started whisking, I already put a pot of oil on the stove so that has been heating up. Next, I'm going to proceed to fry the akara. I like to use very low heat when frying akara because I like my I usually like my akara very crunchy. So if you like yours crunchy like me, you want to use low heat to achieve that. If you like yours on the softer side, then I would advise you use medium heat when frying. Because I'm using low heat, I fry for about 7 to 8 minutes on each side or until it's golden brown. Now I'm going to turn this and let the other side fry for an additional 5 to 6 minutes or until golden brown. After about 5 minutes, it's ready to come out of the oil. If you like yours very brown, you can always leave it for an additional 1-2 to two minutes. I'll transfer this to a strainer lined with a paper towel to get off any excess oil. I'll start frying the other sets and while that is frying, I will get started on the akamo or pap. But before that, I'm quickly going to show you how fluffy my akara looks like on the inside. Now I'm going to get started on making the akamo. This is my preferred method to make akamo and I know a lot of people struggle with making it in a bowl so I have left a detailed measurement in the description box. I've gone ahead and mixed the akamo with water to form a thick paste. Now I'm going to add in the hot water. I'm going to add this all at once and then mix. Now I'm going to add a little more hot water. This will enable the akamo cook more so it doesn't have a raw taste. I'll cover this up for about 5 minutes and after that it's ready. I am going to set this up on the table and enjoy a nice Saturday morning breakfast with my family. I am going to be enjoying this with some fresh hot bread. I've posted a video of this bread on my YouTube short so you can check that out. I'm also going to provide the link to the video in the description box. I really hope you enjoyed watching this video. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. And if you have subscribed, thank you so much for subscribing and I'll see you in the next one.